Hello everyone. Perhaps you've heard that lately planes are flying way too slow. After all, if you can launch a Tesla into space, why not make planes a little faster? Some people think that it's the fault of lazy engineers and designers who don't want to create something better. It's an interesting opinion, but the answer to today's question is a little more complicated. So, you ready to discover why modern aircraft are so slow? Well, fasten your seatbelt and put your seat in the upright position. Have a pleasant flight and let's get it on. Let's begin with a little bit of history. The first jetliners flew at speeds of about 800 to 850 kilometers per hour, very fast in comparison with their piston predecessors. With the development of technology, aircraft changed, and one of the main indicators of progress was speed. The planes that appeared in the 60s flew much faster. The Chu-154 and the Boeing 727 could reach an average speed of 930 to 950 kilometers per hour. But designers didn't stop working. At the end of the 60s and the beginning of the 70s, planes began to break through the sound barrier thanks to their new sharp noses. 950 km per hour wasn't the limit anymore. The Concorde and the Chu-144 reached 2100 and even 2200 km per hour. But the company Boeing tried to create a faster plane capable of reaching 2,900 or even 3,000 kilometers per hour. It seemed that there was no limit, and according to the ideas of those years, in the 21st century it would be normal to book flights from London to Mars, and even from Los Angeles to the Andromeda Nebula. But something went wrong. Unfortunately, the supersonic era didn't arrive. Sonic booms and the deafening roar of aircraft taking off got on everyone's nerves. Afterburner engines were terribly fuel-hungry, and for their owners, these planes were useless toys. So, supersonic planes didn't become an everyday vehicle. Carrying passengers using these planes was like taking school kids home in supercars instead of yellow buses. It would be cool, of course, but absolutely meaningless. But after all, subsonic planes lose speed from generation to generation. The big boys of the reactive era reach 950 km per hour, or even more. And now what? Such planes as the Boeing 737 or the Airbus A320 fly at speeds of less than 900. Well, alright, they're not that big. Let's take the Boeing 747-8 and the Airbus A380. Four engines, it's cool, but the speed? 900 to 930 km per hour. Okay, and what about the most advanced machines of our time? Well, the Boeing 787's cruising speed reaches 903 km per hour. Seriously? And the Airbus A350 XWB's basic cruising speed is the same. So, here's the question. Why do the most advanced modern airliners travel slower than their grandfathers? The fact is that an aircraft is a complex system with a huge number of different parameters, which must be balanced and some characteristics improve at the expense of others. But stop, stop, wait. So engineers reduce the speed of flight on purpose? Well, this may seem strange, but yes, and there are quite a few reasons for this. For example, take these two aircraft, the Chu-154 and the MS-21. The first aircraft took off for the first time in 1968, and is a fairly typical plane of that time. The MS-21 took off in the spring of 2017, and may well be considered one of the standard passenger aircraft of the new generation. They both occupy the same niche, and both accommodate an average of 160 to 180 passengers. So they should be the same. Well, adjusted to the modern technology, of course. But if you look at the liners, you'll understand they can hardly be called similar. And this is one of the reasons for reducing the speed of flight. The fuselage of the MC-21 is 406 centimeters wide, and this is 26 centimeters more than that of the Chu-154. And wider fuselages naturally increase air resistance in flight. But if you lower the speed a bit, the resistance will also decrease, which means lower noise level in the cabin. You like to sleep on a flight, right? The second and more noticeable fact is the shape of the wing. The Chu-154 has larger wings. Besides, it has more sweep, which allows the aircraft to fly faster. Today, engineers are not at all keen to make such wings, and this reduces the speed of the flight. Well, what for? Well, here's the thing. Flying is not only the time that the aircraft spends over the clouds, but also takeoffs and landings. And if in a cruising mode, aircraft with modern wings are far from speed records when they come into contact with airfields, they're really efficient. For example, the MS-21 maneuvers easier than its grandfather. 
Besides, takeoffs and landings are now much simpler and softer, and it's not about the comfort of the passengers, but also about the aircraft itself, which doesn't wear out so quickly, which means it rarely requires repair and is much cheaper. The same can be said about many other elements of these planes. Increasing the speed most often means increasing the maintenance cost. In addition, the closer the aircraft is to the sound barrier, the more stringent the requirements for aerodynamics are. But the main reason for reducing the speed of modern aircraft is the engine. The most modern large airliners have a turbojet engine. You probably know what we're talking about. You can see them on almost all airplanes, and they lift the aircraft above the ground. Turbojet engines use not only fuel as a working liquid, but also air, which is accelerated, heated, and discharged at a frantic speed through the nozzle, thus creating traction. These engines appeared at the dawn of jet aviation. Aviation. However, with the development of such technology, a new scheme arose. It turned out that if another external circuit were attached to the turbojet engine, the air that passes through the circuit would increase the efficiency of the engine itself. So the vehicles became more powerful, and the fuel consumption decreased, a solid advantage. But as it turned out, the efficiency was growing not only due to the external circuit, but also because of the increase in its size, and the more air flowed through it, the better. Large two-circuit engines were called turbofan engines and installed on all modern aircraft. But there's always some issue, and all manufacturers who updated their airliners had to face with the first one. The fact is that these engines, well, they are just enormous. No, really, look. Their transverse diameters are getting bigger and bigger, and engineers have to work hard to put them under the wings of the aircraft. And the second drawback concerns today's topic. Base turbojet engines could accelerate aircraft to very high speeds. Remember the famous Concords, for example? But their fuel consumption was indecently large, especially considering the number of passengers on board. But huge turbofans, on the contrary, are cheap have a great flying resource and are good from all angles. In addition, each next generation of engines is 15 to 20 percent more economical than its predecessors. The fuel costs are reduced, and aircraft with the same volume of tanks can fly farther and farther. The only problem with these mechanisms is that they have a weakness. They don't really like high speeds. Now, of course, test pilots raced the Airbus A380 to 1,000-odd kilometers per hour, but it was a test flight which was thoroughly controlled. In ordinary life, that is not a normal speed. The faster the plane goes, the more active the engine mode should be. If the speed of the air passing through the circuits is insufficient, a huge fan will begin to turn into a vertical wall, which in turn will only make the airplane break. But if you drive the engine to the limit, it will not only increase the fuel consumption too much, but also will greatly affect the overloads. The mechanism will wear out faster, and this can lead to accidents, an unpleasant prospect. Therefore, aircraft builders have calculated and selected the optimal speed of flight, the same 900-something kilometers per hour. And there are more advantages than flaws. If we return to the planes that we compared, then yes, the MS-21 flies slower, but it has much better parameters overall, not only thanks to modern technologies, but also because of these kind of changes. But is it possible that with all the modern technologies, we can't fly at least a little bit faster? Well, we have a counter question. What for? Medium haul aircraft fly about five or six thousand kilometers. What can some extra kilometers per hour give you at this distance? Well, maybe you'll save half an hour or something, but only in flight. And after all the journey, there's also all the way to the airport, the registration, luggage check-in, passport control, the waiting room, and then baggage claim, and the way from the airport to the destination. And all these stages won't be faster in any way. Besides, it's quite possible that one of the passengers will be late for the flight and the plane will be delayed. And that's it. That's half an hour lost now. Well, okay, you might say. Well, how about long distance flights? Well, at first glance, it seems higher speeds won't hurt, right? But for airlines, the fuel consumption and, for example, the cycles of takeoffs and landings of the liners are more important than the flight speeds themselves. In addition, fuel consumption is not just money. Don't forget that the fuel reserves of the aircraft won't change, and the increase in consumption may result in a reduction in range. It's much cheaper for airliners if you sit in a comfortable chair, turn on a film and eat once more, than to take it quicker. From the point of view of the passenger, this situation is also optimal. Yes, the flight can be long, but it will be comfortable, and higher costs for speed will definitely increase the cost of tickets. Of course, for some people, time is more valuable than money. But let's be honest, these people prefer to use business jets. 
ordinary travelers choosing between speed and cost most often will choose the latter. However, this is not a reason to be upset. New, faster, and at the same time more comfortable public aircraft will certainly appear, but this process will take some time, most likely some decades. In any case, don't forget, we live in an age where you can buy an electronic ticket with the help of a smartphone and find yourself practically anywhere in the world in the next day. Seems to us that this is already quite cool. Amazing gadgets, upcoming technologies, incredible inventions, and other cool stuff related to high tech on TechZen. Subscribe, you won't regret it. The link is on the screen and in the description. Thanks for watching. Please like and share the video in social networks, and we'll be right back to you as fast as we can.